and we come to the conclusions for the Nova 3 Color. Let's start, as usual, with the cons. Well, considering that Nova 3 and Nova 3 Color are identical devices, basically, same uh, negatives that were present on Nova 3, they automatically actually jump onto Nova 3 Color. The pen, while it's certainly better than the small, old, flimsy one, it's, as I said, disconnected from the design and from the quality from the device itself, and it seems like an afterthought. So, for a $420 device, I believe that we need to have a more complete solution and something that is belonging to the device and to the series in a much better way. The screen protector. If the producer deems that the device will benefit from using a screen protector, that screen protector has to be pre-applied at the factory and the user needs to get the device with the screen protector pre-applied end of story. That's a complete product. That's how you finish a product. It's much easier to take off that screen protector should you choose not to use it than it is to apply it, especially on the books devices, because you get a screen protector. You don't get wipes, you don't get the squeegee, you don't get uh, dust stickers, nothing. None of those things, which makes the application process bubble air bubble free and dust uh, particles free almost impossible with the gesture system that we now have to actually have those three uh, sections for yeah back home or refresh or whatever it may be uh, the back button or the home button on the bottom is just a relic and it's a remnant of an older era and just a reminder that the design hasn't been changed in quite a long time so for me that button is uh, just not supposed to be there. The system doesn't require it. The system doesn't benefit from it. It's not a fingerprint reader. It's just a button. And while some people may prefer to have that button, which is fine, then at least, at the very least, we should have an option to disable it so that we can avoid those pesky and undesirable accidental presses. The Android 10 environment can be an intimidating uh, prospect for a new user. So uh, there is a steep learning curve for Android in itself. Now that is also coupled with a relatively unintuitive approach, user interface and user experience approach with the books platform. So those two coupled are not an ideal type of uh, situation. So there are hidden options, there are things that might not be obvious, obvious from, uh, yeah, from the get-go. And also, if you are not used to technical devices and you're a paper person, and you're trying to migrate to a device like this so that it replaces your paper needs, it will definitely feel a little bit more intimidating. However, this disadvantage very quickly becomes an advantage. And after about a two, three weeks of actually spending time with a device and patiently learning how to use it, and you can use different resources, such as the Big Books Guide on My Deep Guide, this platform, just check out the playlist, you'll find it. And there's a series of now seven videos, but it'll grow over time to cover everything as much as possible to help you get started and to actually know how to use this thing. But the main thing is that once you overcome that initial learning curve, that complexity becomes a pro because of incredible flexibility and capabilities that are unmatched by other devices. However, all of these cons pale in comparison with the big, big glaring one, which is the Kaleido Plus. So at the beginning of the review, I was asking myself the question, how does the addition of the Kaleido Plus screen or the Color E-Ink screen affect an already excellent platform such as the Nova 3? Because this is the exact same device as the Nova 3 is, it just has an added uh, Kaleido Plus Color E-Ink screen and the limitations that go with it. And to me, the very thing that makes this product stand out in good ways, it's also its biggest weakness. Simply put, the Kaleido technology is not there yet. It's something that's in development. Does it work? Yes, it does. Does it have problems? Yes, it does. So that's something that you have to expect from a technology that's in development. And this is like iteration two and we're going to, or three, I even lost count. But we're going to have more coming very shortly. So while it is certainly an exciting prospect and there are situations where the color aspect is really, really good and it's an exciting thing and it's something new. 
there are also quite a lot of moments where, yeah, it's subpar to its monochromatic cousin. So this is not necessarily books' books' fault. This is going to be exactly the same, and it's going to be present on any device from any manufacturer that uses e-ink Kaleido panels. We have to accept that this is the current industry standard that the developers have to work with. I think that's a very important thing to keep in mind. No matter what you do, you will have these same problems. The darkness of the screen, necessity to use the front light more than you normally would because of the set of darkness, absence of amber lights or absence of the dual front lights to create a more pleasant front light experience, and excessive levels of ghosting. So those are the elements that I think are going to plague every device that's using this technology. Unfortunately, Nova 3 Color is not excluded from those problems. The final con for me has to be the consideration of the price. $420 for a 7.8 inch uh, device, while it is using the latest technology, while it is the latest and the best that the e-ink technology has to offer, unfortunately, that latest and best of e-ink color technology currently carries with it a certain set of negative aspects and uh, sacrifices that you have to make, which you really have to take into consideration when considering a device that is powered by such a display. And now for the pros. Like the Nova 3, it's excellent design and excellent build quality. Ergonomics of the device are very, very good, and it's really comfortable to use in any kind of situation that you may find yourself for extended periods of time. The form factor itself is something that's quite nice. Uh, all 7.8 inch devices manage to strike this very interesting balance between being comfortable enough and portable enough to just use on a daily basis no matter where you are, but also functional and versatile enough to be an effective reader, note taker, document reviewer, or whatever it may you may want it to be. So that's something that's definitively a plus of the Nova platform, including the Nova 3 color. It's really, really powerful and super smooth to use, especially when you couple it with screen sharing options. From your little backpack uh, traveler, it can easily transform with the addition of uh, Bluetooth peripherals, such as a keyboard and a mouse and a screen share. You can suddenly turn it into a little productive powerhouse, which is an important thing to keep in mind because that's not something to be scoffed at. It's a big, big deal that you can use this also as a productivity device as well. Fantastic e-reader capabilities because of the uh, Neo Reader, which is, as I said, one of the best ones out there and certainly my favorite one. But not only that, because of an Android environment, you can install Kindle and use your Kindle library or Overdrive and rent your books from Overdrive or have Kobo or whatever it may be. You just install it and you use it and that's fine. It also has really, really good note-taking capabilities. However, all of these things are provided for monochromatic uh, use. Because of the color ghosting issue, that one creeps in and kind of ru ruins the experience a little bit. But as far as monochromatic content goes, and if you couple it with that swipe refresh gesture, it's something that's, uh, that can be quite pleasant. Added color palette for note-taking and marking the documents is actually quite nice. Provide Provided that the lighting conditions are adequate, right? So for everything here, screen related and color related, it has to be with that asterisk, provided light conditions are adequate. And what are uh, adequate light conditions? Brightly lit conditions. So outdoors, sunlight, well lit uh, uh, room, etc., etc. Basically, anywhere where you don't have to fire up that front light too much, you're going to have not an ideal experience, but a nice one nevertheless, because it is new, you know, warts and all. This whole thing about being able to uh, have an e-ink screen in color, which is actually getting to the point where it's starting to be better, uh, it's a nice experience to have. And yeah, the final pro is it's a color e-ink display that under the right conditions can be quite enjoyable to use. Please keep that in mind as well, because yes, while the ghosting and the front light and uh, the washed out colors are an issue in non-lit conditions and things like that, you also have this other side where under the right conditions, you get a color e-ink screen, which can be quite an enjoyable experience. So the Nova 3 color, how do I summarize this? Well, I loved and I still love my Nova 2. 
I loved Nova 3 and I had high expectations and high anxiety over the Nova 3 color because I knew that it would be powered by that Kaleido screen, which inherently just carries with it a huge bag load of, uh, yeah, not great things to add to a really great platform. The main problem with the Nova 3 color for me is the industry standard. And as such, I don't think books had an option. They couldn't just go and ignore that E-Ink released another Kaleido screen. I mean, the public would be up at arms and going like, why the hell isn't there like a Nova 3 color? I think that the reality of the situation is this is currently the best E-Ink color technology that we can get. That's the bottom line. And as such, the Nova 3 is using the best that the E-Ink color technology has to offer at the moment now at early 2021. I'm thoroughly impressed by what the book's engineers have been able to do to squeeze out of this uh, problematic technology and they are working their damnest. You can actually see it in every update. They're trying their best to optimize it and improve it as much as they possibly can. Again, the bottom line here is there's only so much that they can do because at some point they're gonna hit the core, which is the fundamentals of the E-Ink Kaleido technology are flawed and it's a dead end. As long as you have that passive kind of a filter thingy on top, that's just, there's only so far you can go. It has to go in a different direction. We're not there yet, but for all intents and purposes, I think that they've managed to do a really, really good job and extract quite a lot out of this panel as such as it is. So do these Kaleido limitations mean that you should avoid uh, Books Nova 3 color? By all means, no. Let's not forget, this is still a Nova 3 device, which is incredibly capable, powerful little device that can bring you joy and can fit pretty much any lifestyle that you may have. And the color aspect of it, under the right conditions, can be a very valuable addition to that overall experience. However, you absolutely, a hundred, a thousand percent, have to be aware of the limitations that the E-Ink Kaleido technology carries with itself and what it implies. The bottom line for me is this. If you know that in majority of situations you will be using this device under well-lit conditions such as sunlight, uh, windows, well-lit kind of uh, indoor conditions, then I believe that you will be able to enjoy the Nova 3 color. Because I also in such conditions truly enjoyed it. Even the comic books because I had to refresh, because of the, the gesture it wasn't a big deal at all. And I really really enjoyed the experience of sitting by the breakfast table and flipping the pages and reading a comic book. So that was, there were definitely very, very good situations and situations where I thoroughly enjoyed the color aspect of the Nova 3. However, you have to keep in mind that as soon as those conditions are not optimal, then you're going to be encountering some of the issues that I have mentioned and demonstrated in this review. Because this is a complicated issue and it's not a black and white situation, no pun intended, indeed, oh man, that sucked. But anyway, Bear with me. It's a complicated issue and it's something that's not going to be for everyone. I tried in this review to get various types of different footage and various different types of lighting conditions so that you can get the most realistic and objective picture possible regarding the Kaleido Plus and the Nova 3 color in this case. Hopefully this footage and this kind of approach will help you determine if this is a type of a device and this technology, does it fit into your needs and do these limitations affect you or not? Not. Personally, I'm not looking for color content in my e-ink tablets. So for me, it's an interesting thing that, and I, it's an interesting thing to see the development, but it's definitely not something that, uh, you know, makes me go, oh, I must have it. However, there are definitely gonna be people who want to have this, who've been waiting for this for various different reasons. It doesn't matter. As long as those users are aware of the limitations and they can set their expectations accordingly, I believe that they will be able to thoroughly enjoy Enjoy the books Nova 3 color. However, if you just want to get a color device and you're coming from an LCD and OLED type of devices and you're saying to yourself, oh, finally a color e-ink device and that's what you're gonna go, don't, please inform yourself first, check out a lot of reviews and stuff, set your expectations correctly so that you know what to expect. I think that's the main thing that you should get out of this review is that it's all about setting your expectations right. So, the Nova 3 color. 
Is it perfect? No, but it dares to be the first. As such, I think it's a very important product that can definitely make you happy under the correct lighting conditions and if you map that full screen refresh gesture and keep your expectations realistic. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you find it useful. If you like what I do and you like my deep guide, please consider liking and subscribing and dinging the notification bell so that you can get notified when upcoming videos are released on my deep guide. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy and see you in the next video. Bye.